everybody, this is Melissa Hood, and welcome to Tame Your Brain O for another prophetic segment of what's going on in your world this week. Taking and checking out a little bit of Christopher Duffley. Awesome. We're getting ready to take off. Stay with me, and we'll see what God has to say. How's everybody doing? I, if I could play that and, and, and sing in the, or listen to that in the background, oh my gosh. I'd be in seventh heaven, man. I love that kid's voice. He, he has just got such a dynamic testimony. I, I think I've talked about it before in one of my segments where his mother had done, her mother and dad had done cocaine and he was born with cocaine in the system, but it caused him, because of having it in the system as a little baby, to go blind and developed autism and it's just a remarkable testimony to hear a little boy. Um, and, and if you listen to his, uh, when he first starts singing, when he was like, I, I want to say he's like six, maybe, when he went to the Teamsters Union and actually sang before Jimmy Hoffa and the Teamsters there, he literally brought grown men to tears because here was this young man singing about lean on me, lean on me. And yet with the circumstances that he's the cross he's been given to bear he doesn't see it as a problem at all and matter of fact god's used it for his glory and this young man is giving glory back to god and so it even talking about it almost makes me cry because it's just a testimony to all of us about not looking at everything around us is, is such a bad thing because god uses all things for the good of those who are in christ jesus and so anyhow I just think he's an outstanding human being. So, all right, before we go, uh, take off in this thing. Uh, I have no clue what God's going to talk about today, by the way. Not a clue. So let's pray and find out, okay? Well, Father God, first of all, Jesus, I invite you here because you always meet me here, Lord. I've been putting this off all week, and, and you've been giving me things here and there. But um, I'm still not sure what you want to talk about. And so I'm asking Jesus that you take over and use my mind, will and emotions, Father Manifest the prophetic gifting on my vessel, the revelatory uh, gifting on my vessel, Father. Uh, Lord, you said the gifts of God are irrevocable. And I'm asking, Father, you said, if any of you lack wisdom, ask and it'll be given. Lord, you've shown me these some different things, and so I'm just asking, Lord, to fill my mouth now. And, and give everybody listening, Lord, eyes to see and ears to hear. Let it minister to them right where they're at, right here, right now. Let it be a word of encouragement. Lord, I release the spirit of Barnabas just to encourage your people today. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> I don't know. All right. This is what I will tell you is going on around you. Thank you, Lord. He's already starting to show me. Um, I want to go take you back because my job in the spirit is to be an information gatherer. I, I listen to all the prophets, and God shows me the overall umbrella of what's going on in the body. And so, pardon me. So, from what I can gather... What God is doing, obviously it's been going on for a while now, is he's rebuilding our temple and he's healing us. And a lot of us are almost whole um, to where we are entering into the fullness of God's glory. And, and we're entering into destiny. And the Lord's been talking to me about the young lions. The young lions. And the young lions are anybody from the age of 80 and below. Because God says we don't have to leave until we're satisfied. We can live up to be 120 if we want. If we can proclaim that and believe that, and God says, I'll give it to you. Just ask me. I'll give you long life and good health. With long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. And so, But in order to, to reach that place, we have to be willing to step into alignment with God in different areas of our life, whether it be in our minds, because as the mind goes, so goes the life. As the thinking goes, whether it's a right or wrong perception, so goes your life. And so we have a lot of people, our nation has been divided now, the sheeps from the goats. And so we have people with a wrong perception, and that even includes some believers, where we have people operating in a spirit of religion, spirit of Jezebel, covering the whole, the whole group because of their refusal to deal with their own personal mindsets and, and heart issues. So they're, they've been separated away from the true remnant, and hence they don't know the way in which they're to walk. So things aren't going very well for them right now. But they're um, becoming a very angry group of people because they're having a hard time 
finding destiny. But the only person that can show us destiny, folks, is Jesus. He knows the end from the beginning. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, not to harm you, but to give you hope in the future. And Jesus is freedom, not confinement. Religion now, who's given Jesus a very bad name, is confinement. It sets all these rules in place, and you can't have fun, and you can't do this. Well, I'm sorry, but my God was a partier. He went to the feast of the wedding, and he, he made water, or excuse me, wine out of water. And so, now, did he get drunk? No. He did all things. He never sinned. And so, he calls us not to do anything that causes us to sin. But he does call us to live life to the fullest until it overflows, just like he his, that was the whole intention of him coming into the earth, was to bring us life to the fullest until it overflows. And so our understanding of what true life is has been skewed because we've been born into a very, very cursed world. And so they're walking under the cursings where we're coming out from underneath them now, and we're starting to walk in wholeness as a temple of the living God. And so part of that, um, I have been reading about... Um, in tracking with Chuck Pierce, the last uh, we're on to day 37 now, where he released a word about two weeks ago, I want to say, where he said that uh, we're going through the eye of the needle right now. It's the month of Av, A V, pardon me, for August. And August is our breakout month. We're coming in through this narrow place and we're getting ready to exit into destiny. So many of us have been in transition the last nine months, per Chuck Pierce. And it's been it's been a well provided for transition. He usually gave, uh, I'm to my knowledge, well he's provided for all of us to cross over into these new places in our lives into our new destinies. So we're not looking back at once what was, what could have been, what could have, would have, shoulda. We're giving all those hurts over to God. I'm getting ready to go into that in a second, Lord. Thank you. Um, but the Lord says that. A lot of people have gotten bitter because of the injustices and things done to them by other people that were even beyond their control, that were so grossly, grossly wrong. And I think that there were so many gross injustices done that it's like created a pothole in some of our roads to where we're hitting those potholes and not able to transition over as smoothly. And so God is really, really trying to help Judah, the young lions now, maneuver out of this uh, foresty area, so to speak. Lions pretty much live like on the, on the open plains, but they live in the brush kind of a thing. And he's calling us out now. He's calling us into these open places to confront the enemy. And in order for us to do that, we have to get the brush away from us, the things that stand in our way, the things that hinder our running and hinder us from, from running with ease and fluidity in these new places. And so part of that is letting God heal your heart in this narrow place above um, of the deep hurts and the deep woundings caused by other people. And the Lord says, don't worry about them. He goes, I'm dealing with them, Judah. He goes, they know that they have done a grievous sin towards Christ in you. These people that have done these things, God says, I'm dealing with them severely now. I'm starting to come at them severely. He goes, and this one was a really, really bad decision on a lot of these people's parts towards some of you. Because they knew when they made the decision that they were sinning against Christ in you. They knew that it, was, it made no sense the reasons uh, that they acted the way that they did. And so the Lord says, now I'm dealing with them because they've come at me with strange fire. Um, and so people around you um, have to go before the Lord and they have to, this is what he's requiring in this time, is that some some sins merit a conversation with the Lord. He is just not putting up with it anymore because he realizes what's driving them is their own dysfunction and God's demanding now that they start aligning and doing things God's way. And that's key in this season for every one of us to cross over out of this narrow place, out of off, out of this month. Because if we don't get the baggage off, we won't fit through the needle, folks. You have to get, let God heal your heart. You have to, even if you don't feel like it, your feelings have nothing to do with your faith. So you have to. To allow God to get the baggage off so that you can fit through this narrow place and move into your destiny. You don't have another choice. There are no other options. There is no plan B. It's only plan A. So in order for you to move forward, that's your choice. There's only one. But 
The Lord says that it's also very, very, thank you, Holy Spirit. He said that it's very, very concerning to him as he's watching his body move forward. And, and for the true remnant, the remnant of believers, God says in the end times, you'll know his people, his true remnant, his true body of believers by his love in them. The warm, unconditional love of Jesus. Now remember, Jesus didn't come to try to make us feel like we had to be perfect in him. And if we were, we wouldn't need a perfect God who was, right? So in order for us to come into this new place, coming through the eye of the needle, it's coming into a revelation of the, the truth that we don't have to be perfect to be loved by a holy God, nor do people that believe in him that are called our family of God. Okay, so we're able to see with the heart of David and we're able to see them through the eyes of God, through the heart of God, pardon me, where we just love them. We love each other. And the Lord reminded me probably about two weeks ago. He said, do you remember like 30 years ago when people didn't have this lens over their eyes where they had these unrealistic expectations of each other like well, you need to do what I, you need to behave like I think you should behave. You need to be like me kind of a thing. And, and their own lives weren't even worked out. Their own lives and the crap in their own backyard hasn't even been cleaned up. And so a lot of the expectations of society they place on each other is very unrealistic. It's very uh, hard for anybody to attain and because the standards that they themselves have set up, they can't even fulfill. And so it's it's a hypocrisy, basically. And so the Lord wants us to enter into this new place through the eye of the needle. And it's taking us deeper into the heart of David as a young lion. And we're lions of the tribe of Judah. You'll know the true believers because they have the heart of God. And the heart of God is like, have you ever seen the movie uh, with Aslan? I forgot the name of that movie. Um, anyway, you know who Aslan is. He's that lion. He's Jesus in the movie. And But... He always watches over this group of people. They're sealed with supernatural protection, Revelation 7, 1 through 14. So a lot of you getting freaked out in this hour and thinking, oh my God, we're entering in and what's going to happen this election season and what's going to happen? Who cares? Who cares? Um, quit watching the news if it scares you. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. And God says, because that's not your portion. Now what's fixing to happen in the world for unbelievers? Um, that's unfortunately for some of these people. But God says a thousand will fall at your right and ten thousand at your left, but it won't ever come near you. God is true, and it's based on these four principles. The Lord says he's a God that can't lie, whereas the enemy's the father of lies. So the enemy hits us with these smoke screens and thinking, oh, how's this going to affect me? God says, I promise to provide for all of your needs according to my riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And the Lord says that even though it's going on around you, you're going to be in the eye of the hurricane. Okay, you're in the eye of the storm. You're in that peaceful place to where, it, and I've, I've experienced that before in a, in a job, people. It is for real. It is so for real. Where I saw all this chaos going on around me and I, could, I couldn't feel it. So it didn't affect my blood pressure or anything, but I could sure see it and see it affecting everybody around me. But it never touched me. Not once. Not once. So that's what we're what's we're moving into. And Lord says, irregardless of what happens in the future, he goes, this is part of my birth pangs. This is part of me bringing more of my spirit forward and uh, bringing vessels that have chosen to come into this deep place into maturity. And so you don't have anything to fear. But the Lord says, what does concern him within his body right now is the lack of people knowing how to settle disputes. It's like they don't, whether whatever your skin color, black, white, red, brown, purple, I don't care. It's the same cat, different color to the Lord. We're all made in his image. But the Lord says it's really troubling to him how the body has forgotten how to talk things out. You go to your brother if you have a sin. You go directly to that person first. And you try to rectify it at that level. And the, the biggest part about the words, please forgive me, even if you're not wrong. The key, the spiritual key behind those words are you ask somebody to forgive you because it's a bridge that builds reconciliation, even if the other person's heart's not in it yet. But what you've done is you've just built a bridge 
in the future for that person to cross back over to be back in relationship with you. You haven't closed your heart off. You haven't shut them off to God in you. So Because God can't deny himself, right? He can't deny himself. And so if they're a believer, he's going to bring reconciliation because that's the heart of God. But it troubles the Lord when people have chosen to walk their own way and they're choosing to do things according to the flesh now because of their own pride. So that's an issue that God wants to deal with. And these people are fixing to start going through. It's already started. It's already started. The eye of this month. You will get stuck on this side of the eye if you don't reconcile these things the Lord's way. That's a so saith the Lord, people. And if you think he's kidding, test him. Test him. You'll be over here going through with the world instead of in your safe place if you don't get your rear in gear. And so I'm telling you this honestly as a leader and saying, now is time. Now is the time for us to start listening to the Lord and really understanding that we're all on the same team. If you're calling yourself a believer and yet because we may not be in the same, like we move from faith to faith and glory to glory, well, you may not be on my level of glory or I may not be on yours, but yet and we've got differing ideologies about things or different perceptions about things. And then you're going behind my back behind closed doors and, and spewing hatred and venom over me through word, cur word curses or vice versa, me to you. We're not a part of the same family. I don't know what family you're a part of because God says you will know my people by their love. And love keeps no records of wrongs. It doesn't. It's blind to the things, to your weaknesses. And that's when we were operating in love 30 years ago, the Lord says that many people, the reason why there was so much more peace than there is now is because... We were blinded by God's love on our vessels to the weaknesses of others. It was like Adam and Eve in the garden because we had more of God's spirit back then operating on vessels than we do now as God is trying to uh, fix that and bring us back into the fullness now. So for the few that have chosen to enter back into that fullness, we're the ones coming back into that being blinded by love to where we operate in the heart of David and we see people through the love of the Lord. We don't see their skin color. We don't see their weaknesses. We don't see their anything. We just love them. We just love them into wholeness. That's all we do. And sometimes in order to do that, God will pull you back from certain relationships to let him deal with that heart, fix it, deliver it, heal it. And then um, he restores that right relationship crossing that bridge, bringing wholeness. And so, anyhow, so Lord says he's made his heart be kind to us. He's making his heart be kind to us in this season to where I don't understand this part yet. Lord, show me this in Jesus' name. Lord's been talking to me about how when the king decrees a thing, it can't be revoked, like out of the book of Esther. It's like praying the word of God. Okay, God says he watches over his word to perform it. That his word goes out and accomplishes that which seeks to accomplish it never, never returns back void. So a problem in this hour, thank you, Lord, that's where you're going with that, um, is a lot of believers are learning how to pray the word. They're learning that this is what they should be doing for this hour because your prayers, your words have no power. But his word is 100% effective 100% of the time. But the Lord wants, to, wants his people to also know that even though the king has sealed, has decreed a thing, and he sealed it with his signet ring, so it can't be, you can't return back void, bucks. But you can cause his spirit if you misuse the word of God over circumstances or over people to manipulate things the way you want them to go instead of the way God wants them to go. He'll draw his spirit back from your vessel, so it'll fall to the ground basically into your own soil. So that's that's um pretty serious stuff because what you're praying over the people will start happening to you because you're those seeds are falling into your own soil that's called mixed soil that's i'm i'm learning while i'm talking to you actually right now spirit that show me this do you believe first john four three um i got a resounding yes um so this is the deal with mixed soil let me tell you this is a ron carpenter uh fact mixed soil is very very bad Mixed soil or seeds that have been planted into our outer courts and inner courts that hinder us from getting into the Holy of Holies or the fullness and the destiny of God on our lives. But mixed seeds, mixed soil, are seeds planted by other people that are beyond our control. It's through the word of God, through their witchcraft prayers. Um, they've done it through word cursing spoken over our life or evil decrees. 
And so we have to, I mean, we need to be cursing those bad seeds with Amos 2, 8 and 9 and Matthew 21, 19. The only thing is, is that you can't curse the word of God because God is the word. So when he turns that back onto your own soil, that means you're coming under judgment because you're hitting with a strange fire. So this is, this is, sounds convoluted, but this is very, very serious in this hour. So God says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Okay, we're going to see and move and do signs, wonders, and miracles. But we have to also understand that we have to have the right heart in order to approach him. Or he'll pull back. He'll pull back. And there'll be no power. There'll be nothing. Your words will fall to the ground. And because you'll, it's like, oh, there it is. Thank you, Jesus. God just showed me why. It's like the men, the unbelievers who saw how Jesus delivered people of demons and everything. So, but they refused to submit to him. They wouldn't call him Lord, but they would sure go out and use his name. They would go out and use his name and they'd say, in the name of Jesus, be cast out. But the problem was, was that the demons turned on them and they said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? And so that's the type of atmosphere you will create around yourself if you abuse praying the word of God. It's severe. It is severe. You'll get severe demonic attack. So that's a heads up for people in this hour. Um, um, the word does work. God wants us to be praying the word. God says if you have a need, you have the king inside of you, living inside of you, to start decreeing his word. But God says wherever two or more agree, Two or more have to be in agreement. He has to be in agreement with you in order for the word to come to pass. And so we need to be asking the king, God, what is it? This is why prophetic, the prophetic gifting is so important. This is getting really good, actually. <laughs> I don't want to stop. But God, this is why we want to be seeking the Lord in this hour and asking the king, what do you have to say, Father? What do you want me to pray, Father? Not my will be done. But your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so, okay, with that, um, I think that's about all I've got for you today. I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time. I know we're all busy people. So I want to get on about my father's business for my day. And I want you to know that I love and care about you. Um, I don't have my book out here. If you haven't gotten your copies of memoirs, though, grab your copies at any Barnes & Noble bookstore. You can get it online or uh, via any local bookstore. You can get it on Amazon.com or you can buy it from me. At missyhood.com. I'll be glad to sign a copy for you. And I'll be selling also t shirts starting in January from Tame Your Braino. Sign up for Tame Your Braino to get prophetic uh, daily encouragements of what God is saying every day and, and to move you forward down into your walk and for where God has us going as the body. Know that I love you. Prayer request contact me at memoirs of an ADHD mind at gmail.com. Um, events coming up, I'll have a I'll be on Larry Stevenson's show today. Um, I haven't. I don't have the time. You have to look on my website for that. On Facebook, you can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, LinkedIn, um, and I'm not remembering the Tame Your Brano. So it's on Tame Your Brano. Actually, you can look on there. But I'll also be uh, doing a book signing this weekend at Round Rock Family Christian Bookstore. So come on out, come on out, and join us, and uh, we'd love to see you. Love to sign a book for you, and uh, learn how to overcome your obstacles, man. That's why I'm here. That's what my calling is and what I've been placed in the earth to do. So God bless you. Know that I love you. And I'll be talking to you soon. Bye.